Hey GED students, I had a question sent to me from Liliana, one of my patrons on Patreon, asking me about negative numbers. The rules for adding and subtracting versus multiplying and dividing just keep confusing her. So we're going to work on this. So a couple of things before we start. First of all, just want to thank, thank, thank Liliana so much for supporting Light and Salt Learning through Patreon. Um, you are the people, my patrons, who enable me to keep doing what I'm doing uh, and keep making these open educational resources for you guys so that you can learn. So thank you, Liliana. Definitely prioritizing your video. And then um, secondly, I just want to say that you do not need to know this to pass your GED. If you're one of those goal-focused people who you just want to get done with the GED, you could care less about learning. I know there's a few of you out there. Just go ahead and turn off the video. Go look at something more GED-focused. Uh, that being said, you know, you can do all this with a calculator, I should say, on the GED. Um, most of the time you get negatives on the GED, it's with a calculator, so it's not a big deal if you never learn these computations. However, however, one, reasons to learn it. One, it makes it simpler uh, to do the algebra if you understand negatives, okay? You'll catch your errors, you'll be less likely to make sign problems as you do algebra, so it's useful. Uh, two, it comes up in life. I know you guys are constantly telling me that math doesn't come up in life. Well, negatives do, and we're gonna look at two different applications today. Real world, practical applications of negatives as we look at this. Okay, and then uh, thirdly, guys, if you're college bound, you should know this. Just plain and simple. You're gonna be dealing with negatives so much in college mathematics, you might as well buckle down and figure this out. Okay, so all that being said, we're going to do this my usual way, which is the long, slow, I understand way, not the I just want the rules way. So if you love a person who just teaches you the rules, go find another video and stop trolling me on the internet. We are going to learn why. Here we go. <laughs> okay, let's start with something we understand and build on that. Let's look at something really simple. Six plus three. Now, I've got a lot of students who just, you know, have this fact memorized or you know, they might do some side work when they have to do ones that they don't have memorized. Uh, but you guys mistake the side work, like the rules, the processes, for what the math actually means. And when you do, you get confused. So let's think about what this actually means. Okay. If I have six plus three, uh, it means I'm starting at six. So I'm going to draw a number line in an unusual way this time. Remember how I said that we were going to have some practical applications of negative numbers today? Let's pretend we have a thermometer. A thermometer is just like a number line that's been turned up and down, and it kind of makes it easy for students to think about this. So if I say that I'm starting at 6, I'm starting somewhere up above here on the number line, and then I'm adding 3. That means I'm getting 3 more degrees. I'm going up by 3, so 6, 7, 8, 9. That would put me at 9. And of course, 6 plus 3 is 9 as we know. Wonderful. Now, that being said, 6 minus 3 is a whole different scenario. I'm starting at the same place. I'm starting at 6. Let's start right there at 6. But this time, instead of going up 3 degrees, I'm going down 3 degrees. I'm taking 3 away. 5, 4, 3. Now you might say, hello, Kate, I know how to add and subtract. Why are we doing that? Well, I want to start with something we understand in order to build on something we don't understand because I have a lot of students who just see this plus sign right here in between and they go, hey, Kate, well, obviously this has to be nine and I see a negative sign somewhere, so it must be negative nine. And I say, hey, wait a second, you don't understand what addition and subtraction mean. Uh, it doesn't mean, you know, just combine numbers without regard to their sign. It tells you about the direction you're going. So the fact that this is negative six here tells me where I'm starting. I'm starting by going down six from zero. And then plus three here means I'm then moving upwards from where I started. I'm going up from negative six. Let's go ahead and let's try that on our number line. So let's start at negative six. So negative one, two, three, four, five, six. Guys, I'm way down here below zero. Okay, now from there, I want to go up three. I want to rise three degrees, you guys. Gain three degrees. And so I'm not going to go down. I'm going to go up. 
negative five, negative four, negative three. That puts me closer to zero. I'm not at negative nine, I'm at negative three. Okay, those of you guys who just memorize algorithms, see that plus sign and just start relying on your math facts without understanding what you're doing, get in a lot of trouble here, okay? So once again, that's why I don't care to just memorize rules without understanding. Okay, so then let's look at the next example here. Negative six minus three. I think I'm gonna have to extend my number line, you guys, uh, because this time I'm starting at negative six. Negative six is my starting place. But then from there, I want to go down three more. Guys, I'm already down six. Let me say that again. I'm already down six. I'm already below zero. And I'm going to keep moving in that same direction. Negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine. Okay, I was down and I went down some more. Now, a lot of students say to me, Kate, that doesn't make sense because look, minus and six minus three is three. But yeah, that's not six minus three, you guys. That's negative six, start negative and go down three more, subtract three more. Okay, all right, so we did it with the number line. I also very much, my other favorite way to think about this is with money. Okay, so before we come out here and just like bust out a rule that we can always follow, I want to think about it one more practical way. Because guess what? If your rules don't agree with reality, your rules are BS. I don't know what you memorized in math class, but they don't work if they don't agree with the real world. So maybe you don't like number lines. Maybe you're not a visual learner. Let's think about money. Okay, so starting here, starting balance in your account is $6 and you go up $3. We already have six, we put three more in. Of course I have nine. Same thing with six minus three. I start with a bank account balance of $6. I go down three, I take three away. Of course I have three. Now a lot of students say, well, how's that supposed to apply to negative numbers? I don't understand. Well, have you never gone negative in your bank account, y'all? I was a single mom for 14 years. I was poor, guys. And that is why I know a whole lot about having a negative account balance, okay? So I want you to think about if I started with a negative six account balance, I owe the bank right now $6. If I sit there and I put $3 into my account, it'll be nice. It'll be nice, it'll help, but it's not gonna take me all the way out of debt. You know, I add $1, now I'll be at negative five. I only owe them $5. I give them another dollar, I'm at negative four. I only owe them $4. And I give them a third dollar. And now I'm at negative three. I owe them $3 still makes sense uh, with that number line picture that we did as well. And now let's think about if I was at negative six, my bank account's already negative. And then I go like a fool and spend three more dollars. I probably needed milk, y'all. Okay, so I owe them six dollars. I spend three more. Guys, I was already in the hole and I'm going more in the hole. I was already negative and now I'm even more negative. So of course, negative six, negative seven, negative eight, negative nine. We see again that we have this number that makes sense with reality. Now I know how you guys are. I get it. I get it. You're like, please just give me a rule, Kate. I can't think about the real world every time I do a problem. Okay. Now that we discussed reality, I'll give you a rule, but it's not the rule most people give. Here is what I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about signs and memorize. If it looks like this, do this. I want to talk about direction. Whether you're on a number line or you're thinking money, think about the direction you've moved, okay? So let's first look at the ones where we have the same direction, where we were starting positive, like six, and then we were moving more in the positive direction, like plus three. Okay, we can see when we're starting positive and we're going more positive, it feels like my numbers uh, add up like we're used to adding in the side work. Okay, but I'm actually going to say add absolute value because I want to look at the negative number and don't worry, I'll explain myself. But let's go down to the very bottom problem. I had the same direction this time too. Look, I was negative and then I went even more negative. I was already down from zero and I went down again. That's what I mean by uh, same direction. Either I was up and I went up or I was down and I went down. Same direction. And we can see that again, the absolute value added. And so when I say absolute value, I'm just talking number without sign. 
So add the absolute value, six and three, okay? So same thing here, add the absolute value, six and three. Uh, but now when you're done with that, you do need to determine sine. And here's how you determine sine. W well, what direction were you moving in? <laughs> okay, when we were positive and we moved more positive, we can see that our sine remained the same. And when we were negative and we moved even more negative, we can see that our sign remained the same. It's still negative. So positive, go more positive, you're still positive. Negative, go more negative, and you're still negative. So if we have the same direction, we're going to add the absolute values. We're going to keep the sign. Okay, that being said, let's think about when we are going in different directions where we were up, but now we go down, or we were down, but now we go up. Those are the two in the middle. So let's look at this one. We were up six, and then we went down three. You can see that we did what looks like subtraction to us, like subtracting six and three. It makes sense. You know, the two numbers are battling each other. They're going in opposite directions, so they're going to kind of cancel each other out. So we are going to subtract, but once again, we're going to subtract absolute value. Let me show you what I mean. Come down here to this one with the negative six and the positive three. When I'm saying we're going to subtract, I just mean we're going to ignore the signs for now and subtract six and three. They're going in opposite directions, and so I could just subtract them. I get a three, I get a three. But now, as you can see, these threes have different signs. So how do we determine the sign? Well, we determine the sign by deciding which direction we went further in. Let's say that again. Which direction did we go further in? Did we go more up or more down? Do we have more money in our account or more debt? Okay, so I'm going to just put it in quotations because it's not really bigger, but the number with the bigger absolute value is going to win. Whichever direction you went more in is going to end up being the sign. Um, and these guys are getting really, really messy here, but let's look at, take a look at this original example that we had six plus three. Oh, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> Let's take a look at this one. How about that one? Six minus three. We, we are going in an up direction and a down direction. Well, which direction did we go more in? We went six in the positive direction and we went three in the negative direction or down. And so we went more in the positive direction, six jumps, uh, than we did in the negative direction, three jumps. And so this guy ends up being a positive three. Whereas compare that to the next one. In the next one, we had a negative six. We went down six, and then we went up three. Okay, this time we did the six jumps, more jumps in the negative direction. Therefore, this guy is going to end up being negative. So that's what I mean when I say the bigger sign wins. Woo, brutal. Okay, we got through addition and subtraction. Now let's compare this to multiplication and division. If you're still tracking with me, I'm so impressed. Bonus points to you. I wish I could give you extra credit. Okay, or throw a Jolly Rancher at you. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, let's look at the next example. And again, it's not based on memorizing rules. It's based on understanding what these things mean. If I say six times three, what am I saying? Okay, I'm saying that we take a six three times, or we move six three times. We call it timesing because it's a number of times that it happens. So let's like start at zero and let's move six three times. So if I move six one time, that'll put me at six. Okay, we move six two times, that puts me at 12. And we move six three times, that puts us at 18. Moving six three times gives me 18. Now you might say, but how about six times negative three, Kate? Well, same, same idea, we're still moving six, but this time I'm telling you to move it three times in the negative direction. It's like, instead of getting six three times, it's like um, I'm going to get the six, I'm gonna get it taken away three times, okay? So this time I'm starting at zero, Okay, and I'll, I'll take away that six three times. So let's take away six once, puts me at negative six. Take it away again, negative 12. Take it away again, negative 18. And if you don't like the way I just explained it, remember that you can flip it around. If you don't like the idea of taking something away three times, um, you could always think of it like a, a negative three six times. 
So like I owe you $3 six times. Like maybe I go around to everybody I know and I borrow $3 six times. So like I borrow $3 for Jack, from Jack. Now I'm in three debt $3. Then I borrow $3 from Jill and then Mike and then Tanya and Buddy and I don't know princess okay so i borrowed three dollars six times i'm all the way down at negative 18. Woo -woo. so same thing for the next one you think about it it's like i borrowed six dollars three times uh, it looks exactly like this picture here borrowing six dollars three times i borrow six dollars once i'm down to negative six twice i'm down to negative 12 and three times i'm down to negative 18. Now the next one, um, I don't like when I'm doing a real world example for it. It's a little harder to think about it on a number line. So actually my preferred way to think about negative six times negative three is with money. Let's hearken back to those days where I was a single mom again and I wanna talk to you about how much I cried. Okay, you guys, so there were times when I was a single mom where I did go negative. And you know what the bank does when you go negative? They charge you some fees. They charge you fees that make your account even more negative. So it's so frustrating. You're like already negative. You're already struggling. And then they charge you so you go more negative, right? So whenever this would happen to me, I would call the bank. And I'd say, oh my gosh, I went negative And it's not my fault. Like my paycheck didn't go through when it was supposed to go through and I would cry, you guys, because I really was poor, okay? Stated already. So <laughs> I would cry. And then what would happen? Sometimes if the person on the other end of the phone was nice, they would reverse the charges. They would take away that negativity from my account. That's exactly how I think about this one. Let's think about Let's pretend like the charges were negative six. So I have all these negative six charges on it. Maybe I had three of them and I call them up and I say, please, please, please take these off my account. And they say, okay, you know what? We'll take off three of them. I say, okay, please, thank you so much. So they say, okay, Kate, we're gonna take off three of, take off three of your negative $6 charges. Okay, so of course, three times six, three $6 charges is 18. But guys, what's going to happen if they take away negative charges? What will be the effect on my bank account? Well, my bank account is going to go back up. Let me say that again. My bank account is going to go back up. If the bank takes away three $6 charges, that means my bank account is going to rise. It's going to go up $18. I actually see a positive effect on my bank account. I get positive 18 Okay, wonderful. Now that we've got the rules, or now that we've got the logic behind it, let's finally sum it up with the rules. Okay, we'll give it to you. Okay, and it's still about same, different. Take a look here. If you have the same sign here, positive times positive, you can see that in all of these, we just multiply as normal. Look, 18, 18, 18, 18. So that's not hard. What's hard is the sign. So if you have the same sign, like here, positive times positive, or here, negative times negative. We see that instead of it becoming addition this time, it becomes a positive answer. Okay, uh, and so my favorite way to think of it is just that two negatives cancel. When I see two negatives in a row multiplying, I'll just go, oh, hey, <laughs> they cancel. <laughs> okay, so same sign, you end up with a positive answer. And then what happens when we have different signs? One's positive, one's negative. Well, of course it sticks around. We see a negative answer because it's like we had a negative charge so many number of times. We're going negative again and again and again and again. So our answer is going to be negative. All right, so those are the rules for adding and subtracting. Now, Liliana, you might be saying, gee whiz, Kate, this isn't even the problem I sent you. No, but this is what we need to understand in order to do the problem that you sent me. So go ahead and look out for the next video I'm going to do, and that one is going to take these rules into the world of algebra where you need them for the GED and for your college classes. All right, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. And once again, if you're a patron, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll prioritize your videos.